Hi everyone, crazy tough times at the moment, self-isolation, disruption to everything we're doing. You know it's got bad in England when they've had to shut the pubs. It's even happened to my local, the Oaks. And the Globe, and the Sandpiper, and the Nelson, and the Ship, and the Rising Sun, and the Bear. We've heard about this fantastic new idea out of Japan, on Nomi, it means online drinking. Friends getting together, sharing a drink virtually when they couldn't share one together. So we've invited some of our friends, some of our PH ambassadors, some of the people we work with, to have a chat and tell us how they're getting on in this crisis. Hello everyone, it's another On Nomi with me, Andy Blow, um, online drinks. This time we've got a very special guest all the way from Australia. We've got Mark Weber. How are you doing, Mark? Very good, Blowy. Very good, mate. I like this concept. Yeah. I know it's in challenging times, but I have uh, helped the party. Exactly. What, you, you've come prepared. What have you got there? A little bit of Australian Shiraz. Just to, got a little bit of grunt about it. I need some grunt now. Just clearing the vocals. Yeah, <laughs> just to be clear as well, I'm on the coffee because it's uh, seven in the morning. What time is it with you? Is it is it you allowed to start drinking yet? Um, yeah, mate, on four thirty in the afternoon. Afternoon. Oh yeah, so. yeah. You're all yeah. good. Ah, very good. Perfect. So you're stuck in uh, in sunny uh, Australia. I'm over here in the UK where it is actually sunny at the moment. So yeah. just just tell me a little bit about um, what the last few days have been like because I hear everything's changing in Oz. Yeah, well, mate, it's um, like all of us, it's been an uh, absolutely extraordinary time, hasn't it? I think that um, I was on my way to the Grand Prix in Australia, uh, just doing a little motorbike trip, and then um, when we got down there, um, actually the guy I was riding, he's like, there's no chance it's going to go ahead, there's no chance, and I was being relatively positive. I thought, well, let's see how how it goes, because at that point, like the start of that week was actually looking relatively soft in the media and in Australia we hadn't had really any cases at all and yeah. then as the week got deeper it was just obvious that um, the event just could not take place given how it's just compounding like as we know it, three or four days is a huge amount of time in this period at the moment so to have an event over three or four days which is clearly the case for a Grand Prix like that so I was knocked on the head and then um, yeah so which was extraordinary you know the drivers yeah. were going home and you know all the you know i don't know how much freight was out there and the planning that you know it's you know it's in a park obviously it's not a sort of conventional circuit it's a, it's not yeah. purpose built so anyway that was when it really hit you between the eyes to see like this thing is um of course it's 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 unbelievably serious but it really it just hits home when something like that at that notice is just absolutely unprecedented it's just never have i seen anything like that in my life no, it's when it hits it right up in front of your eyes, isn't it? You can read about it on the, on the news and all that kind of stuff, but when it's in, in your face and affecting your immediate circle, it's, it's mm. something different altogether. So I was just going to, I'm not going to focus on the F1 too much, but I've got to ask you, you know, what, how's this, how, do you, how do you see this playing out? Because from my reading, you've got to have eight Grand Prix minimum to make it a world championship year. There was 22 at the start of this year that were scheduled. Yeah. We, I think we're down to like, what is it, 15 potential now or something like that. Well, what yeah. do you see happening? It's a ginormous headache for them, Blowy, because, you know, you and I have known each other a long time and we've been close to the industry. We know how dynamic and how quick they can move. Formula One is an extraordinary business in, in an yeah. extraordinary sport as well. Uh, they're militant on planning they're, they're, it's a global sport freight's an issue logistically it's one of the most challenging sports in the world I'd imagine and I'm a huge sports yeah. fan I'm happy to help, be challenged on that but I think it's, it's, there's a lot of planning so I think mate, to answer your question I think that you know they're, they're looking at around July but I think that is still very very optimistic yeah. considering you know we've seen you know what's happened with the Olympics obviously that is again another yeah. you know once every four years but that's an extraordinary thing to have happened there so Formula One with the travelling circus, with even TV, even if you do it behind closed doors with no spectators, there's a huge amount of TV production, there's yeah. flag marshals, there's there's a lot of safety required in terms of, let's say, someone does have an incident because the boys aren't yeah. going to race soft, they're going to race hard, so then there might be something happen there. So there's all these other layers that, you know, quickly get put on the table where it's going to be challenging. So I think that, you know, condensing, they're looking at condensing the weekends. Yeah. They're going to try and have two-day weekends. Traditionally, it's been three days, so that's already yeah. something which I would certainly think it's a great idea to try and help get some events in without trivialising them too much and rushing them through a bit like Big Bash cricket. They still need to be Grand Prix. I think they will be in the, yeah. the 
but um, yeah, so uh, it will it will be interesting how um, you know that all gets played out, buddy. Yeah, no, that that is that is you know all well all to be decided, I guess. And if you were if you were back in the the hot seat, I mean, you drove an F one for eleven years. You went there. You, you've never seen anything like this, clearly. But you had some tough times. I remember two thousand and eight when you came off your bike and wrote your leg off for a while. You had to come back yeah. from that. You know, you had a lot of uncertainty facing into the season there. What mentality are the drivers, especially, and the teams around them, going to need to be ready for when this starts again? Well, I think that, um, as you know, mate, most sports people are are pretty resilient, pretty dynamic. Yes, we have. Uh, goals and dates and schedules to to stick to so when it gets absolutely you know hit out of the park um, with something at this uh, at this sort of level I suppose it's it's something which we we know we're absolutely on the on the back seat of the bus you know this is this yeah. is not a, 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 a something that our sport even you know our governing body the FIA they they cannot ask answer any of these questions this is at such a high level on the government uh, governments in in each region, obviously, yeah. and if we even do get sort of an appetite to go racing somewhere, I think for the countries are going to be so they're just not going to be synced potentially. On they're going to be yeah. you know for all of us to believe that everything's just going to get back to normal in 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 an, in an even phase on a global sport, I think it's going to be really hard for for us. So mentally, I think they should be ready for that. That you know there's still going to be there could be some late decisions and i think just be ready to go when when the call does come it could be quite short and sweet but you know i don't think they're expecting anything in the next few months but when it gets closer to sort of the summer they obviously the boys will be ready to go the teams the sort of logistics mm. operation but the build-up and the lead time is quite long so i don't think there'll be any surprises but um i think mm. also just quickly mate it was quite it's yeah you know like the olympics as well i mean yeah. imagine training four years and it's not going to happen and like formula one's nowhere near to that level in terms of, sort of the preparation goes into it where you know they're, they're ready the mechanics yeah. everyone's ready but it was the first race of the year it wasn't even like it was sort of at the end of the year where we missed no. some stuff and people were tired everyone had just had three months off well yeah. technically immensely they're pretty recharged ready to go and now they have to wait another sort of four or five months which is absolutely a trivial in the scheme of things i'm just trying to show the timing was quite interesting for our sport in terms of energy levels yeah. and frustrations but there's no, absolutely no way around it you just have to well, you know, will, it, it will it create an opportunity for some of the sort of maybe some of the underdogs or something like that so some someone who can one of the one of the lesser known teams or one of the lesser known drivers who can actually sort of seize the opportunity this is going to unsettle a lot this is going to unsettle a lot of people they can they can dive back in and like you know catch people napping maybe yeah i think there's going to be some there will be some some rusty drivers and i think that the you know this is a the biggest gap any professional Formula One driver's ever had in his career. Once you're established yeah. in the racing, you don't you don't have you know any any longer than really you know, probably two months out of the car, maximum three months. So twelve weeks is a long stint to not actually get into the car and, and, and practice your profession. So yeah, let's see, mate. There might be a few uh, opportunities in the first few races where guys they're going to be as rusty as they've ever been in terms of yeah. like battle hard. They're not going to be you know they're. Yeah, there will be some rusty and pit stops and all those type of things where confidence, you know, we need exposure. You know, whether, yeah. it doesn't matter who you are, you need exposure to, to your profession to get, you know, confidence and fine tune things. And when you haven't had that, then mistakes can happen. So, so I take it then you'll be sat at home, like commentating on old races to keep yourself sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. It's funny, actually. Channel 4 just asked me to do a. Um, a little bit of a piss take, actually. So I have just done a comment. I have just done a lap around Spa, commentating in my hammock yeah. here, which um, which they wanted me <laughs> in the hammock. They wanted me in the hammock to sort of simulate, you know, going through a rouge, which is yeah. super fun. Corner in Belgium. So, um, look, we're finding lots of trivial, trivial ways to sort of uh, keep ourselves entertained. Otherwise, you know, you know, we need to, and uh, we're yeah. lots of great partners out there and people, you know, trying to 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 keep. You know, whether it's sport or business or, you know, whatever you're involved in, you know, people are looking at ways to keep people, you know, sort of satisfied and, and fulfil that, you know, they're going to be back. We're ready to go when when everything is, yeah. you know, when it does return, which it will. We just don't know when. Exactly. And that's so moving on to that. You mentioned business and obviously you're you're in business these days. Aussie Grit Apparel, which is your mm. your brand for outdoor wear. Yeah. Born out of your previous, you know, your current actually as well, love of outdoor sports and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, what's what's it happened to the that industry at the moment? What's happened to yeah, to the brand? yeah? Well, straight away, mate. Um, you know, given that given that we we're linked to a lot of really good events, 
um, particularly we had some nice ones coming up here in Australia, which was yeah. uh, the Ultra Trail uh, Marathon in the Blue Mountains with uh, the Ironman group uh, run that yeah. event. So that was cancelled. Um, and, you know, we had a lot of products going into that event. It was our second year starting to get some yeah. great traction with some brilliant partners and the consumers getting more and more confidence with our products. And then there was a few other events as well which have been cancelled. So we planned yeah. on, obviously, you know, having, you know, good, good sort of uh, – you know, infantry go through those events and get more and people to touch and feel our products and get a chance to to um, you know basically get involved with us and and from a business perspective that was important for us and then also on the retail side you can imagine that you know we have really good retailers uh, in in Australia here we have about 25 yeah. 30 doors where and they are either linked within a shopping center or linked somewhere else or you know on a high street somewhere and 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 that's all over you know, it's just been absolutely decimated yeah. in terms of how people can access those stores um and obviously wow. so the appetite yeah, yeah. for people to get out and about so it's tough times mate it's really tough um we're finding ways like doing cool things like this with you obviously and as i said yeah. at the top you know, we've known each other for a long time you're on a journey with precision hydration and you know we've got a we've got a great partnership with both of our brands but it's um you know we, we've got to find ways to you know keep keep the staff uh hungry and motivated to try and get through this and also yeah. um it's just not that difficult because our staff you know we, we, you know they've, they've, they've received the tough news you know pretty well in terms of it's going to be a tricky phase for us at the moment so i expect nothing less from them but yeah still a long way to go that's the challenging thing for all of us it doesn't matter big or small i think just the you know the supply chains and just how long it is going to be to get through this it's 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 quite challenging yeah i think one of the good things for us is although like like you precision hydration has seen obviously a, a slump in sales and that kind of thing which we'd expect because quite rightly the world is focused on bigger stuff at the moment but i think what i've seen locally to me in the uk at the moment we're not on full lockdown you can go out and exercise each morning i'm going out for my 6am run and normally i'm like one of three people out and I've, i'm like Practically, I'm having to run around people to make sure I don't get too close because they're all out yeah. running. And there's a lot of yeah. guys and girls just what, who have clearly dusted off some of their, you know, their their PE kit from the 1980s, and they're out there and yep. discovering this sort of love of running and biking and and stuff. Are you are you getting out at the moment? Are you still able to? Go out? I am, mate. Yeah, I am. And you make some really good points, mate. I think that um, first of all, yes, I'm getting out. We're allowed to cycle here. We'll do to do some exercise, um, which I, yeah. I do that in the mornings before it gets. Bit too hot, you know what the weather's like out here, mate. Can get pretty yeah. toasty in the afternoon, so I've got a hot week coming up again here. But, um, which again, you know, first of all, problems. But it's, um, the we just had some a bit of a sale for Osgood Apparel, and what was really comforting with that sale was, um, because I just love people breaking through that sort of you know, first part of the concrete to get the confidence to go out and have a bit of a crack, and yeah. and and. We have never sold more sort of larger size garments, let's say, sort of some of the yeah. you know, extra large and the XX large, and that and that sort of speaks volumes to people that guess what they got a time now where they're going to have a go, and I think that's that's a great, um, you know, speaks volumes to people that they might not have had time in the past, and and their sort of lifestyle didn't give them the chance to to invest back yeah. into themselves, and now they have they've 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 they've, they've, they've taken the plunge, they're going to buy a bit of gear. And they, you know, hopefully they go through the sizes on the journey with Aussie we're back through uh, through that. But in terms of, the, you know, the mindset of the humans, I think it's nice that, they're, like you said, there's a lot of people out now having a go. Um, is it a holiday? No. It's sort of like mm. it's a weird feeling, but people are, I think also for your mental resilience and, and your sort of well-being, I think natural endorphins to get outside and, and get to, into the nature 100%. is definitely going to help people through this because you can't be cooped up inside. It's just like it's just no. going to be really... Uh, I know some countries are, but you know, if you still have the opportunity to get outside, obviously it's for a little short window. It's it speaks volumes for your sleep as well. Definitely, yeah. I found it with with my kids. Obviously, they're three and six, and don't they've got my, my my Bobby, my son, who's six. He's got an appreciation of what's going on. He obviously realizes that life has changed a fair bit for him. But in the last yeah. week, we've we've taken out Bethany as well. We've just taken them out on the bikes a lot. I've taken them over to the field. We were lucky. We've got a big field football pitch with no one on it. About Mm. a quarter of a mile from my house yeah. and both of them in the space of a week have learned to ride their bikes because we've had the time yeah. to focus and genuinely i know it sounds a bit like you know trying to make lemons lemonade out of lemons here but that would not have happened yet if if i didn't yeah. have 
that you know because I'm I'm doing 50 50 childcare with my, with my wife Lucy she's still working I'm still trying to work from home we're just yeah. di- dividing up the days I'm doing mainly the mornings with the kids she's doing the afternoons so I've got all yeah. morning and like this morning when we finish this call I'm straight out and we're going on a you know I'll take them on a on a push bike ride for two hours yeah and, you know yeah, yeah. go and play around yeah. so there are some good things you know there are some at least some positives that you can kind of yank out of this if you want to i think the other the other one as well which we were having a a laugh about earlier is we're all getting a bit better with this tech aren't we it's like i I think (laughs) i think we're about 30 minutes late starting this call because we couldn't actually figure out how to speak to each other properly (laughs) on this thing but we got there in the end and genuinely my team we've got an 11 people team at precision hydration now fantastic you know and johnny's doing a great job of um organizing regular meetings you know we're we're all on google hangouts or zoom every morning at 9 30 every afternoon at 4 30 we've got this like um on there we've got fancy dress friday so we've uh, every friday afternoon at 4 30 people are showing up i know you love a short skirt lovely. i know you love a short skirt mate well, it's yeah. pretty you should say that it's pretty you should say that mate because last week i was showing a bit of cleavage you know i was, uh, I was oh. resorting to diving in lucy's um into, into <laughs> lucy's wardrobe from a fancy dress but we've had some great creativity and i've seen with my team like a, a phenomenal bonding happen through this you know because of yeah. the common adversity and that's one of the things that i want us to all take away mm. from this is like like we're going to come through this and mm. as a team I, absolutely mate and i think that there's no question about it that and it's so hard to be you know condescending or patronizing or find the right sort of tone of words but i mean there's i don't think there's going to be you know the time of now where there's going to be a lot of pressure in households too you know a lot of uh, you know discussions where you know around finances or around you know just how they can manage the kids in school because everything has been affected and i think that patience and talking to each other and this is actually you know i think the positive things that you mentioned about your staff there and what goes into into the normal household too not just the monday to friday nine to five but after hours is that this is no one's fault really like you know you can't really the, the, to 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 have a real to, to break down and have the pressure of it getting to everyone um whatever your situation i think it's really important somehow to find the patience and and the opportunity to talk to things through and and find some of the positive to try and get through this i know it look everyone is is in this to get everyone like some of the you know the phone calls i've had with people that i just could never ever imagine imagine yeah. having They've, everyone's affected with this and we're all you know trying to to get through it and um yeah i think communicating with your loved ones and doing what you can to, to stay as positive as possible and just break each day down to i think not take it in holistically and say well, it could be this it could be that rah rah the media you know can really torture your head i think just you know chip away chip away and as we do in, in, in the sporting field you know you never focus on round 16 when you're round one we've got to just focus on on what's ahead of us and i think it's really important Definitely. Well, like you say, I mean, how would would we have been sat here having a having a having a chinwag, you know, like this normally in March? You know, no, because I'd be flat out, you'd be flat out. Yep. Yep. You know, it just it just wouldn't happen. So it's it's um, at least it's it is that opportunity to connect. I've, I'm sitting in on a um, a, a, a surprise. I'm not going to say who's it, who's it's for, but there's a surprise birthday party going to happen in a few days' time on on Zoom for someone because mm. you know there we can't all get together. But it means I see a load of people that I otherwise wouldn't have seen because I probably wouldn't That's have been right. around to actually attend a physical do. So, hey, you know, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna do what we can. That's right, yeah. mate. Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's important. And um, we actually had one of those the other night for David Coulthard. He was forty nine on the twenty seventh of March, same day yeah. as my dad. So, um, yeah, we had just a rotating bit of a sort of a revolving door of eight or nine people coming through, and everyone just uh, so yeah, but bizarre to see you know all of us sitting there frankly, you know, pretty much alone. I mean, I was just getting out of bed and the boys, they, again, they, I had a glass of red at seven in the morning for DC to celebrate. <laughs> um, yeah, so Strong. It's, it's bizarre times, mate. And and, and that's what, um, you know, it just, yeah, it was it was really weird. So we are trying to find ways to hit the little milestones, you say, mate, whether it's anniversaries or birthdays or whatever, and, and try not to be disrupted too much and find ways to, to stay in touch with each other. Excellent. Well, on that note, mate, um, Send our best to all of your your gang, to Anne and to MT yep. and Cassandra Absolutely. and Andrew and Kerry and everyone. Yep. And yep. Um, yeah, we'll um, we'll we'll stay in touch with them. 
over the next few weeks and months. And I hope that for I hope that you enjoy, not enjoy or well, I suppose I do hope you enjoy it. But I hope you t- you this downtime, this enforced downtime, is, is something something good for you as well. Because I know you 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 work yourself hard, so don't work too hard the next few weeks. Yeah. No worries, mate. All the best again to to all your team at Precision Hydration, all the guys. A funny, quick, funny story, mate. When I did the motorbike Go ride, it. It was a, it was quite a long bike ride uh, from from Noosa down to Melbourne, a sort of four or five day trip. And I was doing it with a buddy of mine, really cool actor, Eric Banner. And one morning we come down to breakfast, breakfast and he goes, I slept shit last night, mate. So he said, for the first time in my life, I actually got some cramps. I said, mate, well, I've just got the thing for you, mate. So, and I had with me, I had with me, mate, some Precision Hydration. So, bang, so Banner. Banner launched some of those into him and he's got some of those at home now and he swears by them. So um, can you're I, can into we the on, space too, mate. Can we put on the packet now that Chopper Bloody Reed drinks? Uh... <laughs> well, mate, <laughs> it might put people off sales. I'm not sure if people <laughs> Chopper Reed. They want to get too much into that. But, um, yeah, no, he's uh, he's on board, mate. He's uh, He loves the product. So all the best, Thank matey, you. and um, yeah. we'll stay in touch in these trying times. And um, pedal to the metal yeah. for everyone. Lovely to see you, mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks. See you, mate. Mm-hmm.